What a fantastic movie this is. It is one of my favorites I've ever seen. And Did you I enjoy it? That. Great, great. Yes, I just loved it. And John, you've said that this is a dream project for mm -hmm. you. Tell me more about that. So, <clears throat> we've had the good fortune with the movies that we've made to come in and make something that some other producer has been working on for many, many years. You know, I think we're very good at just coming in and making something happen. So, like, I can only imagine, you know, Cindy Bond had been working on that mo movie for almost a decade. Um, this is the first time that I'm, I've been that producer, uh, or you know, and I, I bought um, the Jesus Revolution Time magazine cover story in 2015, and uh, and was awestruck by it. We were researching for another project. It was an article that you couldn't read online, and it was this 10-page spread of something that was so undeniable, sweeping American pop culture, that Time magazine had to give it credit with a cover called Jesus Revolution. And, and it was just this, mo this movement of love. It was a movement of unity. It was happening with, with people that were, society said could not hang out with each other. And I just fell in love with that time and that movement and wanted to meet people that lived it. That led to the relationship with Greg Laurie. And um, Brent started doing research before I can only imagine, after Woodlawn. And the more I learned, the more I thought, I just really want to get this movie made. And so every movie, um, uh, I can only imagine, I still believe American Underdog has been trying to get the credibility uh, and I'm grateful to the audience um, because the films were successful enough that we were able to make a very, very authentic movie mm -hmm. for our audience. The fact that Lionsgate let us make a movie called Jesus Revolution is astounding yeah. and a miracle. And so uh, so this has been a passion project for years and years and I just think it, it, it happened at just the right time. And, uh, and I'm so grateful that we got to make the movie I'm very proud of the movie. I love this movie. Yeah. I love, it's my favorite experience with an audience I've ever had to watch the movie with an audience. And, uh, and I can't wait for people to see it. Well, I want to talk about that because you guys have screened this movie for pastors. My dad's a pastor, so I have a soft spot, you know, for pastors. Mm -hmm. What kind of response are you seeing from pastors? Because this, what I love about this movie is it doesn't let pastors off the hook. Mm -hmm. It's saying this is also a challenge to you. Mm -hmm. This isn't just inspiring. This is a challenge. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, early on, that was our goal and our vision was that pastors would buy in and they would see themselves in the story. And it, it happened immediately. I mean, we're seeing um, support at a level that's unprecedented, at least for us in our past films, because the empathy that these characters play just allows that entry point for them to see themselves, to see their um, their their brethren and their brothers and sisters, and and to see, okay, you know what? There's a solution to what how I'm stuck in my church, in my community, mm -hmm. and this film is a tool maybe to be able to help our community in a way that I had never imagined before. Yeah. And I want to say this too. Um, what Benjamin Franklin said, half the truth can often be a great lie. Uh, and for every story that our industry tells of a, you know, of a pastor gone bad or so, someone, you know, um, uh, you know, televangelist, whatever, uh, there's 10,000 pastors doing great work right. on the ground all across America. I think the American pastor is one of the most under, or clergy is one of the most under-celebrated, under-seen mm -hmm. jobs in American society that binds us together. And, and, they're, and they're, they're doing great work. And a lot of times those stories are not told. And so I wanted to tell a story of a pastor that threw his doors open to, some, to something he didn't understand and opened his doors to an audience of people that in the religious context of the day, a hippie going to church at the time was like, go home, get a job, cut your hair, rejoin society, now maybe you can come to church. Mm -hmm. Instead, Chuck just threw his doors open to this group of people. And I think that is that is a challenge to pastors all across America. So I wanted to celebrate pastors and then also challenge them to let's see this happen again and, and open your doors. Open your doors to people that, that, that either are misunderstood or, or you, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Amazing things can happen when, that, when, that, when you have the courage to do that. What do you make of the fact that we are seeing revivals on college campuses across the country right now at the same time this movie is coming out? What can we make of this? Well, what's interesting about that for years we've been working on this story. We almost got it made during COVID, it got shut down. And so I think uh, just there's a divine hand uh, on the timing of the film. And the reason we made it was because, uh, you know, the thing that we've said for years is if it happened then, it could happen now. Like if it happened once, it could happen again. And uh, we were wrapping a film in Kentucky and I live in Nashville. 
uh, last week. And so we were about 60 miles from Ashbury uh, to this huge auditorium where this revival is taking place that happened in 1970 as well. It was a huge part of the Jesus movement. So Beth and I were like, let's just go. And it was like day three or something. So we just drove over. We walked in, sat there, and it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And Greg Laurie called me, and he's like, you're the first person I've, I've known that's been there. What, what did it feel like? I said, it felt just like the scenes in the movie. Like, it felt identical, the, the, just the emotion of it, um, which was why we made the movie. I just wanted to feel awakening a little bit, renewal a little bit. And you felt it in that room. And listening to those college kids talk about their generation, their time, what God's doing, it was, it was so inspiring to me. And, uh, and, and I loved it. And the hope is that things like that can spread. And, uh, and that's, that's why we made the movie, is we're, we're, not, we're not pastors. We're politicians, we're, we're entertainers. So the best we can do is to just tell the story of the last time this happened in American society as authentically as possible mm -hmm. in hopes that people will say, this can happen again, this can happen now, it's our turn, it's our time. And that's my hope. So to see that happen even before the film comes out is really, really cool. That story just gave me chills. I mean, that is remarkable. And that you got to be a part of that is so cool. Yeah, it was great. Now, I want to talk about the importance of people going out to see this movie opening weekend. What challenge do you want to give Christian viewers? Why do they need to be in theaters? Well, you vote you vote for your content at the box office. And opening weekend will determine a lot. It will determine how long it stays in theaters. It will determine um, Hollywood paying attention to the numbers that you do. So it's 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 almost like a math problem, you know. So if this is content that you want to see, if you want to see more of this, you have to go support the content that you want to see more of. And uh, on top of that, our movie is it's hilarious. It's like heartfelt. It's very touching and it asks a lot of great questions. And um, it's something to go see with your family. There's not going to be anything that like be offensive to you know to your family. And you could take. Um, Take your kids and see it, and um, and it could be a you know as John says a lot. It's it's a gathering, right? It's 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 a it's a movie that's trying to bring people together thematically, but also just physically and materially in the theater. We're trying to bring people together to see this film. But yeah, opening weekend is huge. Yeah, I mean, look, that rule doesn't just apply to movies about faith. I mean, it's you could say the same thing about horror movies, for example. I mean, when you go and buy a ticket, whether you like it or not, your ticket actually tells Hollywood. Okay, we're going to make more of that because people are going to go out and see that if we go make it. It's true. And so with Jesus Revolution, it's the same concept. If you go out opening weekend, Hollywood, who has deep pockets, um, allows us to make a movie like Jesus Revolution with the type of budget and marketing campaign that we need for people to see it in significant numbers. Uh, you go out opening weekend, and that tells them, okay, we should make more of this.